Three main institutions have held a video conference with the UK's Prime Minister about a Brexit trade deal. So far, an agreement on imports and exports has remained elusive, despite four rounds of negotiations. Both sides have agreed to pick up the momentum during the next round of talks in July. Boris Johnson says he doesn't see a reason why a deal can't be struck. But Charles Michel, who represents the EU's 27 leaders, says he'll never accept an agreement that goes against the interests of the bloc, as shown in my report. <laughs> it's the first high-level meeting on the Brexit trade deal since the UK left the EU, and it started with a friendly atmosphere. Very good. Lovely to see you all. Recent talks between the chief Brexit negotiators have seen little progress, so the EU and the UK have agreed to add new momentum to negotiations. This comes as the UK has officially confirmed it will not be seeking an extension to the transition period meaning time is tight and both sides want to secure the best deal for their citizens. Sticking points remain over the level playing field, judicial cooperation and fisheries, and both sides will be taking the issues down to the wire. I don't think the political atmosphere is, is right just yet, and I don't think uh, it will be possible for Boris Johnson to strike a deal until later in the year. He needs to be able to present it as a victory over the EU, and, and I think that's possible in that the EU will have to budge on fishing if there is to be a deal, and it will also have to budge away from its maximalist view on state aid, and he could package that up and sell it as a victory to the Eurosceptic audience at home. But of course, if once you dive into the details, you'll realise that for that deal to have been achieved, the UK will have had to have really move quite significantly away from some of its positions. The question is, which side will blink first? And Shona joins us now live from the bridge, our studio at the heart of the European Parliament. Hello there to you, Shona. So it seems um, a lot of talk, but not much action. Well, that's been the case, I suppose, for the last few months. Uh, there's been little or no progress, which is why I guess this high-level meeting this afternoon was important to try to reinvigorate the talks. And when you speak to sources, at least here in Brussels, they were saying at least what they got from the meeting was a commitment from Boris Johnson and his team that he did indeed want to deal and that they would therefore try to move on that basis and add more momentum to the negotiations, having them weekly, having them more intense, uh, but hopefully having something to come out of it by December. And I'm joined by Heidi Hautala, uh, Finnish MEP for the Greens, who's also on the Trade Committee. Heidi, one of the main sticking issues we've heard for the past while, of course, is this level playing field, where the EU wants to ensure the UK has common standards in the, when it comes to the environment, mm -hmm. uh, labour rights, state aid rules, to ensure that there's fair competition, to ensure that whatever the member states are doing in terms of investment here, the UK does in order to get access to its market. Now, the UK says that takes away from the, its sovereignty. That's the whole mm -hmm. point of Brexit. How do you find a middle ground here? Well, I think it's... Um it's odd to hear that sovereignty has now, after Brexit is a reality, become such a big thing in the UK because I would think that, um, that we need to pull our sovereignties as member states, the EU with its 27 and the UK because we've never had a situation uh, in, in uh, negotiations for trade agreement that we would be so close to each other, the two parties. And that's why I'm a bit, um, I'm sad and I'm also a bit shocked to see that uh, there is such a, uh, let's say, disagreement from the UK side on uh, sticking together because it's all about the access to the big internal market, which still is the biggest in the world. And I would uh, believe that it's a great benefit for citizens and enterprises as, as alike. Mm. So um, it doesn't sound good. No, I mean, is that what you are hearing, I suppose, from the Trade Committee, people who are very close to negotiations, that so far on these issues, they're so far apart mm -hmm. that there, there may be no movement? Because, again, it's, it's caught up with this issue of sovereignty and the whole point of Brexit being to leave the EU's orbit and no longer have the same sort of common standards. They make their own rules. It seems to me that um, partly um, it's, it's a very symbolic issue this question of sovereignty and of course the UK is, is uh, free to, to do whatever agreements it likes with, with the United States, with Japan, uh, India and Australia and so on but um, I think it's, it's really uh, strange that we wouldn't uh, be able to agree on common standards that we have been shaping together it's not that Brussels has imposed things on, on, on London and, the, and, uh, 
and uh, the UK, but uh, they have been common decisions. And together we have been able to, to um, develop the highest standards in the world for sustainable development, very responsible development policy. The UK has always been my my uh, big um, uh, I ideal in, in development issues, mm. defending women's uh, rights all across the world. And I think we have to also to be able to discuss together, very closely together in, in the future, in international organizations mm. to, to, to address the global challenges such as climate change. Well, one of the issues, well, now that you made that point, it's interesting because the UK says they are the world leaders when it comes to issues around money laundering, when it comes to the environment. Yes. So therefore, why should they be compelled to engage in a legal text with the European Union when they're already uh, world leaders in these areas? Uh, well, that I cannot completely understand because um, I would say that... Um, um, if and um, when the UK wants to have uh, the broadest possible access to the EU internal market, um, I mean, we cannot compete each other out. We need to follow the same standards. And of course, uh, at times the UK could, could propose higher standards and we could have uh, common bodies to discuss these uh, things related to regulation together. The main thing is that we should not drift apart. So do you think that maybe uh, that there could actually be a conversation between both sides about standards in the future, that the UK isn't a rule taker per se? Yes, exactly, yeah. because the starting point is so good. So I was kind of dreaming about a trade agreement which could be a yeah. kind of a model trade agreement for the yeah. whole world. Yes, and just I suppose, I mean... One other issue about this is the politics, okay? So, you know, there's, there's the facts and there's the realities around trade and sovereignty and so on. But we heard there from Sam Lowe, the trade negotiator or uh, trade expert, you know, the politics may not be right for Boris Johnson to do a deal right now. But if not, where, if not now, then when? Because the timeline is so short. Exactly. What do you think about the politics of it, particularly in the UK? Well, um, um, I think the negotiators um, put a lot of hope that today, in this high-level meeting, a breakthrough of some kind mm. could be um, achieved because uh, at certain service level they had done from both sides what they could. Okay. But now um, we have probably no later than till October to, to find out uh, so how October we are going to work. So October is what, is your, is what so. you're saying is the deadline, um, not, not yeah. the last minute to the 31st of no, December. No, I wouldn't say October. so because okay. uh, this uh, agreement has to be ratified and uh, it has not gone unnoticed that the European Parliament has put quite a strict yes. uh, precondition on, on the common standards, environmental okay. protection, social agreement, okay. etc.